Welcome Jedi Path Workers and those interested in Jedi Path working. Today's topic is the ebb and flow of the Force, why this is important, and where these lessons also extend into other areas of Jedi training, and even your mundane life to a degree. So the first thing we need to do is set some groundwork for what we're talking about with the ebb and flow. And a lot of you have heard the term ebb and flow, but they probably haven't really had an opportunity to dive into what that means. Now, we're not talking about light and dark, but we are somewhat talking about yin and yang, and a lot of this gets conflated by people. So, starting out with the core concept of it, ebb and flow is about the fact that in order for anything to move, it has to have a pulling in and then pushing out effect over time. Much as the tides can't just keep rising, nor can they just keep receding. Much as you cannot just breathe in and keep breathing in nonstop or breathe out and keep breathing out nonstop, there is an ebb and flow to all things. Your heart has a beat and a stop to it. It has a pull in and a push out effect, as do your lungs, as does every single muscle in your body. This ebb and flow is so much part of harmonious nature that we have sunrises and sunsets, we have moon phases, where we have a waning and waxing concept. This is everywhere you look in everything you're going to see in life. And often with the force, when we're talking about ebb and flow, we're also talking about concepts like yin and yang and pulling in the force and pushing out the force. We often, those of us who are in the path working side of this, focus very heavily on breathing exercises and meditation exercises that put emphasis on the ebb, on the ebb and the flow, on that pulling in, pushing out. We don't just harp on this for the health benefits, although the health benefits are numerous and there are plenty of studies done on the benefits of deep breathing exercises, what it can do for you, how it can help you, how it can lower blood pressure, how it can lower your pulse, or how it can stabilize different aspects of your health. There's a lot going into what deep breathing can do for you. But that's not the only reason we kind of harp on the ebb and flow in that way for a lot of training. A lot of this is to make it second nature, and that's going to become more important later on as I go through a little bit more of ebb and flow in your life. But there are other factors in this too. When you utilize the force in any way, whether it is to extend your senses, whether it is to amplify your healing, to cleanse toxins, to better yourself, to recenter your focus, any force-based ability requires that you pull from your personal reserves to some degree. It is in many ways, the spark that lights a greater fire of connection to the force itself. Now, the force is infinite. You will never pull all of it in, nor will you push all of it out. But recognize that the greater your internal reserves have grown, the more that flow is flowing in and ebbing out in a continuous rate so that you are a conduit for the force, the more you can draw on it. So some of this is enhancing your natural reserves. So when you reach out, you have more of a baseline to work with. But some of this is also very much that you are increasing your ability to conceptualize, focus on, direct, and utilize that. And I start with conceptualize because a lot of your limits are going to be up in here. Most people that I've met, the greatest limit they have between being very strong in the force and being slightly capable has to do with self-doubt and being told they can't. Most of the people that are very strong in it have either overcome great hardships or had to face great challenges. And upon doing that, they literally have lost some of those limitations mentally. The greatest thing you can do to benefit your force training is to lose as many limitations as you can. And in focusing on expanding your breadth, here as well, so that you mentally can conceptualize a larger connection to the force, 
so too will that increase your ability to utilize it. Now, that's not the only thing. That can lead to a false positive where a person believes they have more connection than they really do. That's very common. That happens in the Jedi community. It happens in the mysticism communities. This is Jedi pathworking, but Jedi pathworking runs parallel to all forms of mysticism, as it includes an understanding of the root line of all mysticism, the Force, and, at least from our perspective as path workers, and it parallels to all forms of martial arts as martial arts are an expression of the force. So, with that, this ebb and this flow, it's easy, it's easy to get stuck up in here as well. But, as you do this more and more, the breathing exercises themselves actually increase the amount you're moving the energy you don't really even need to be able to feel the force all that well. Some people are not super good with force sensing. They are not good with kinesthetic sensing. They're not good with visualization or audioization. They just don't have a good baseline. But yet they move tremendous amounts of energy. And you see this in, uh, in Qigong Masters because, quite frankly, they may not be focusing on the sensory skills. They may just be focusing on the health benefits and the amplification and a lot of these people can place a palm on your chest and launch you backwards with a very slight movement. But there's a little ebb and flow in that. There is movement. If you extend your hand all the way out and you hyperextend all your muscles, no amount of focusing the force is going to knock someone back. If it does, it's going to be some of that innate ability to fall. And where your ebb and flow there is, is you're taking the fact that you have this pulled in level of force above weight and gravity pulling down. And that can't really be amplified as much. Now, this is where we're going to start getting into some more of the ebb and flow as it concerns life. As it concerns life in general, you can only push out for so long before you need to rest and draw in. You can only work for so hard before you need to decompress. Whatever decompression is for you. For some people, that is play. For some people, that is relaxation. As a path worker, meditation is a very good road to go with that. I recommend, well, I recommend an hour a day. But your schedule probably isn't going to fit an hour a day. So your bare minimum should be at least five minutes upon waking or before going to bed as a recentering. And I say one or the other because for some people, it acts as an amplifier. It gets them moving. Uh, that's me. I try to get my meditation a little bit of it done early. I try to do some stance training when I do it. But there's the other side of that. And that other side is people whom it calms down. Now, I can use it to calm myself down. So I try to get some time in the evening as well. And that's how I split my own block up, especially on very busy days. Look, I've got as busy a schedule as anyone else. I run my own business. Trust me you don't always have time. I get that better than most other people. So while I recommend an hour, I'm going to say get five minutes in at the start and maybe the end of your day, or even at the start in the middle or at the late in the late evening, your evening, whatever that is, the, the closing of your day and directly before sleep, find out what your rhythm is with the meditation. But you have to have some kind of recharge to push outward. You have to draw in to push out. Okay? By contrast, also, you have to push out to draw in. You can't bring things to you without reaching out. A common question people have for me is, how can I better my life in X, Y, and Z? How can I do better here, here, and here? And invariably, my advice, while it is different in every situation, comes down to, are you reaching out to pull in what you need and what you want? And the most common answer is no. No, you're not. And that's fine. But if you're not reaching out to pull in, then you are not using the ebb and flow of the force as it manifests through all things. The force is infinite. It is within all things. It is part of all things. It makes up all things. It is the essence of all. When you're dealing with the essence of the all, its rules apply to all things. You can only push out so far. You can only reach out so far. With your meditations, reaching out is also a good focal point. But when you reach out, you then have to pull in so that it becomes personal and internalized. Otherwise, you're just extending and overextending. In strategy, any form of strategy, be this business strategy, be this tactics, uh, be this for games, be this for fun, 
you can only advance so far before you're now compromising your stability. And as you gain more from reaching out, you must then pull in and recentralize and restructure so that what you've gained has some structure, but it must also be used to reach out in order to pull back in. A lot of people in life wind up in situations where they can only reach out. This is a one of the great economic crises of our time is that people don't have enough resources to pull anything in once they've reached out. They can only reach out. And since they can only reach out, they can only pull in just enough to keep going and then they have to focus on rest in other areas. I'm not gonna get into the depth of that. I'm just using that as a quick comparison. General concepts of logic dictate that when one has a limited pool of resources, be that breath or focus, attention, energy, essence, self, they can only reach out for so long before they must pull in. They can only pull in so much before they reach a center point. And even if they were to compress what they've pulled in, there's going to be a finite limit to that before they must reach out again if there's going to be any growth or betterment. This is the ebb and flow of the force in action in your life. So I said I was going to talk about how the breath work and cultivation of the force interconnects to larger ideas. One of the reasons we often tell you, go do your meditation, go do your meditation, journal about your meditation. We want, we want you to have a record of how you've grown, of how you've gotten better through time so that you can see it and so that you can break that mental barrier that you're not improving because that's one of the biggest mental barriers you're going to run into. But we're also teaching you to instinctively understand the ebb and flow of the force because you can only push out for so long. Now, you can push out and pull in. Now, if this looks like I'm doing a pseudo martial arts movement and I'm, do I'm doing this trying to aim it at the camera and not hit my microphone. So if that looked like very clumsy martial arts, it was. It's very poorly done. Don't use that to defend yourself, at least not from the exact frame of reference from the camera and using, you know, uh, your point of view at the camera. But the concept is there. A lot of martial arts utilize a pulling in, pushing out combination. A lot of karate is famous for this so that when one arm is moving out, the other one's moving in. And the idea here is that when you are extending, you are flowing out, okay? You have to pull in so that if you must flow out again, you have created a reserve to push out with by the same token if you are pulling in right you're pulling someone towards you and you know you want to take control and grab them you have to extend if you, you keep this arm here while you're pulling someone in you can't manipulate them without extending there must be ebb and flow in all movements this is one of the reasons why we often push for if not an exploration of the martial arts as a combat form than as an understanding of the force because you are physically ingraining this understanding of how the force moves into yourself. If you're really looking to advance your senses, you're really looking to advance your ability to use the force, you would like to heal people, you would like to be better at shielding, you would like to be better at deflection of negative energies in life, you would like to be able to cleanse yourself of negative emotions better, or to refocus yourself better mentally, you must innately understand ebb and flow. When you cleanse, you must replace what you've pushed out. When you have pushed out, or when you have reached out, you must draw in. Otherwise, you are just exerting energy to overextend. A good example of this is the classic cyball technique from psionics. It's makes its way through the Jedi community every once in a while. A lot of people are big proponents of it. I'm a big proponent of it. I really like the technique. I've taught it to others. I've met others that have taught it. It's one of the best good start methods. It is a very good basic introduction to force work. If all you do is make that cyborg, all you've done is pushed out to one spot. If you don't either reabsorb that or in some other way utilize it, You've only extended your energies. You've not grown. You've not gotten stronger. Now, one of my dear friends, Otori Miko, has a 
Qigong style breathwork exercise set that he does. And in it, you'll see a lot of pulling, pushing movements. In fact, all of the movements have some pull and some push to them. You will see yin and yang, ebb and flow of the force in action in those. So I would highly recommend those at any point. You should be able to find his stuff fairly easy. Wherever you're seeing me at, you'll probably see his stuff at too. And it's a good physical start to that ebb and flow. Now he's getting into some more advanced stuff now. But his older stuff is very suited to beginners. And his advanced stuff is suited to, I'll say advanced beginners. I wouldn't say that anything has hit the intermediate phase yet. But those are good areas to look at. And I'm sure you can expect more from him on that. So with this ebb and with this flow, you see it in that martial application. But when I say martial application, I should say in the arts. Those arts train it into your instincts, okay? In here and in here, so that it is natural to reach out and draw in, to draw in and reach out, to pull from reserves that have already been drawn in to push out. Understanding ebb and flow is essential to healthy energy work, to good force work, healthy force work. Without it, well, you're probably just doing mental gymnastics and mental imagery creation at that point if you have no ebb and flow to your practice you're just creating images in the mind and while that will have some mental power i mean you are drawing in food to exert electrical energies you're looking at a very abridged methodology compared to the full extent of what the force could give you in this so to finish this up a little bit further with the martial aspect when you defend, you are pulling it, you are pulled in at some point. So if someone is striking at you and you want to cross that line and deflect that punch, you have to be pulled in. You're either pulled in from the side that you're deflecting with or you're pulled in below. What you can't do, okay, is be so, I'll try to give a good example of this. You can't push out constantly and then expect that to do anything like even then you're creating ebb and flow across the horizontal plane you're creating flow from ebb if you're not you're in a position where you've hyper extended across and you have no intent to move back and you have a strike coming in like this you are not going to deflect this by pushing out this way more now that probably sounds pretty obvious, right? You'd be surprised. When I started martial arts, I had a tendency of doing long stances like this and not realizing, like, there, right? And not realizing that this hand should be ready to hammer someone. I didn't. I tried to use this as a blocking hand, and I should have definitely pulled in and had more of a mid-range. Now, that mid-range is the harmony point of ebb and flow. And that is what we strive for in our day-to-day. -day. That is non-movement. We strive for that harmonious point whenever we don't need to draw in or push out. A harmonious point allows you to pull in as you need to. So if you have something coming in toward you, you can pull in pretty easily or push out. You can push out or pull in, depending on how you see push and pull. And what you begin to realize is that ebb and flow are the same thing. They are motion in contrast to points of reference. And that is how we understand the force. Only through experience with the deep breathing exercises, some level of study of the arts, and then experiencing it on a physical level can we truly in our minds grasp the vastness of the ebb and flow of the force as it moves on a much larger scale than just our bodies do. Once you understand how it moves through your body, how it moves through your life, how it moves around you, then you know how to make changes. People say, I want this thing in life. Well, do you have room for that thing? Well, no, I've, I've pulled all in. Then you're going to have to give some out to push out, to pull in. People say, well, I, I need, I need, you know, center and I, I'm overextended. I'm pulling, I'm pushing out. Have you tried pulling in? Have you tried bringing back the centers so that you have some reserves from where you're pushing out? 
recognize also sometimes ebb and flow don't provide a reward. They are actions. They are forces within the force. They are a concept of the flow of the force. So just because you've pushed out and reached out doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get something back when you pull in. There has to be something there to pull in. And this is where awareness becomes very important. Again, this is also where things like martial application, breathing exercises help. You can only push out so far before it actually is a detriment to how much you can inhale. You stress your lungs out. You give your muscles spasms or you weaken them partially. You strengthen them over time with the right exercises. But if you're just exhaling all you've got and inhaling all you've got in each breath, you're going to lose everything air even though you're moving large amounts of it you're losing access to the energy because the muscles will tire so the amount you can push out and pull in becomes less this is where harmony becomes important this is where balance becomes important this is where an understanding of cultivation of that ebb and flow as a cycle becomes important that's why martial arts shows this so well because even the most linear martial art uses a cycle and yeah i'm using a very crappily displayed Wing Chun punch because I'm trying to line up the camera and not kill a microphone that's sitting right here. But that's a good example. That's a very linear art form Wing Chun is, and it goes hand over hand. It very much straight lines, but in those straight lines, it circles and it cycles with an ebb and flow on the vertical plane of the body instead of the horizontal. Now, Angles are worked in and higher level practitioners use those. But to the commoner, this is something I can explain really quick. You can go look up a video on Wing Chun and see it and go, oh, wow, what Charles said makes sense now. One of the reasons why I push for the Jedi arts to be available to all and to be respected and cultivated, even if you're not practicing. The cultivation of the knowledge provides an understanding of the force. Without the Force, I would say that I'm not going to tell you you're not a Jedi because I don't like to start fights. But I really don't mind starting fights on that at this point in my life. So yes, without the Force, you are not a Jedi. So if you cannot cultivate this understanding of ebb and flow as an aspect of the Force, understanding how it flows through all things, and yet how we must pull it in to concentrate it, that's the ebb, is the concentration, and then the flow to push it out then are you really Jedi-ing or are you just LARPing? As a path worker, we have to understand this. And I think that's all I've got to say. I want to thank you for joining me. If you like these videos, be real honest, the best way to see more of them is to share them. When I see videos shared on walls, when I see the numbers go up, that encourages me. I know that it's reaching the new people who need it. If you're a 30-year veteran of the path, do we even have anyone on? I think we have one person who's been on it 30 years, maybe. No, we have two. We have two that I'm sure of. Um, so, and I don't think it's 30. I think it's more like 25. But if you're a five or 10-year veteran of the path, you, you may not need this or you may. Maybe you've been in areas where this wasn't taught. But if you're a five-year veteran of the path and you've been a path worker the entire time, this may not be as useful to you it may just be a reminder and if you need that reminder that's great but someone out there who doesn't know needs this more and i'd like to see it get to them i think this episode went really well and i'm going to leave it right there with one last statement may the force guide and protect you <laughs>